Hello crafters, I'm Jan B and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator. Today I'd like to show you how I made this tri shutter card. It's an absolutely delightful uh, style of card and surprisingly easy to make. This is my week three in five weeks of fancy fold cards. It um, takes quite a bit of cardstock and designer series paper but it, as I say it is easy. The only thing I found confusing was when I was cutting the pieces um, I kept losing track of what I'd done, what I hadn't done and the rest of it. Um, I am very easily confused about things like that. So I devised something that has made my life so much easier doing this and I'm going to share it with you um, in case you're very much like me and easily confused this will make life much much easier oh the sorry the designer series paper that I use here is called delightfully daisy and that's what I'm going to be using on the card that I'm going to make for the video but I'm changing the color scheme of it so I'll tell you the card pieces I'm going to use the card base is daffodil delight and it measures 6 inches by 12 inches which is 15 by 30 centimeters and then for all of these other pieces which is where I started getting myself confused um, I did this this was going to be um, my test card but once I'd finished scoring it and scoring it rather and cutting it um, I had the idea of putting these on it a bit like a jigsaw puzzle as I went along and it was so much easier so let me just tell you what pieces you will need and how I made it much much easier for myself so first of all Whisper White you need two pieces that are five and seven eighths inches by one and seven eighths inches and that's 14.9 by 4.7 centimeters and they go onto those two sections there and then you need two more pieces and these measure three and seven eighths inches by one and three eighths inches which is 9.8 by 3.5 centimeters and they go there and then you need two pieces that measure two and seven eighths inches by one and seven eighths inches which is 7.3 by 4.7 centimeters and they go there I will be putting all of the measurements in the box below the video if you miss any of this and then you need four pieces that measure one and seven eighths inches by one and three eighths inches which is 4.7 by 3.5 centimeters they all go in there and then you need one piece that measures three and seven eighths inches by two and seven eighths inches now I have written all the measurements on here whisper white and then underneath the design series paper I've also put on there how many pieces that you need so there's one piece for that and I've also labeled them A, A and A that means those three are going to have the same design paper and then these are B that's B, B and B there we go so that means they're going to have the same paper I'll explain that a bit more with the next bit so the designer series paper that we're having is first of all two pieces that measure five and three quarter inches by one and three quarter inches which is 14.6 by 4.4 centimeters and then two pieces that measure three and a quarter inches by one and a quarter inches which is 9.6 by 3.2 centimeters two pieces that measure two and three quarter inches by one and three quarter inches which is seven by 4.4 centimeters in fact I changed my mind on this didn't I those two are both a right okay and then you will need four pieces of 
DSP that measure one and three quarter inches by one and a quarter inches, which is 4.4 by 3.2 centimeters. And for this one, it is two and three quarters by three and three quarters, which is seven by 9.6 centimeters. You will also need um, a piece of whisper white which is approximately half of a complete sheet and you will also need some uh, more daffodil delight and this piece measures 11 and 3 quarter inches by three and a half inches this is very approximately um, which works out to be 30 centimeters by nine centimeters right I've already done quite a lot of this ahead of time because this could take uh, could be an amazingly long video so what I've done ahead of time is I have adhered all of these pieces together um, and then then once you've done that in fact I could bring those pieces over couldn't I obviously it's on the wrong color but At least I can show you those bits, give you a chance to catch up with me. Obviously I'm going to make another card after the video um, so that I can get all these pieces used up. Um, I don't like waste. And then these two are also adhered together. I found that once all these pieces were um, adhered to each other, all the layers were adhered and then placed onto this base, I found it a lot easier to work out the bits and pieces I wanted to add to my design. To start off with I didn't actually bother about sticking them together but it was so frustrating because every time I put something down on it it was moving. Right there we go. Okay so that's my base. Let's move these away because this will be for the next one. Right. I'll pop, pop that to the side. In fact I'll pop that just in front of me I think. And I'm going to do some stamping on here first. Now what I need, let's bring my card back, I need to stamp that sentiment and that one and three daisies and those two there. That's all my whisper white. Okay so there's one sentiment, two, daisy and this. Now the stamp sets these are coming from, one of them is not these particular bits but I have actually used a Christmas stamp set. Right now this one is the happy birthday and this is birthday delivery. This is one of the new um, stamp sets, not that one just yet. Um, Daisy Delight, that's this one here that I'm using. Blooming Love. I'm using that little one there. This is a carry forward. And Colourful Seasons, I am using May All Your Tomorrows Be As Happy As Today. I thought that was really a lovely sentiment to have. When I was making my cards, what I found I was doing was doing the stamping and the cutting out and then placing them on my colour, like this sheet here that I'm doing. Um, but then I wasn't sure whether that colour worked okay, so I was redoing it. Um, of course I don't have a completed one of this to show you, so maybe it would be easier to understand as I go along. Right, I'm going to be using uh, Tranquil Tide ink. So this is upside down, one of the sentiments doesn't matter that it's upside down. Move 
moves them out of the way once I've done. I'm going to turn that around and do this the other way. Just leaving myself enough room to die cut these. And then I need three flowers, three daisies. And if you stamp these with one of the petals going straight down, it will fit into the punch nice and easily. You may prefer just to use little scraps of paper rather than taking half a sheet as, as I have. Right, and then that one. And then I need um, two of these. So I'll do one here. And one here. Okay. So what I'll do is I will just detach the sentiments I hope I haven't cut that too close. Um, right, now first of all these little ones I'm going to punch out with my one inch punch and what I'm looking for is I'm going to put my punch so that the edge of the one inch circle is going to be touching that berry there and also that flower there. I'm going to lose a bit of my leaf up there but I'd much rather have all this fancy bit in and I'm not too worried about the leaf. Right, okay, so if I'll get this into position, give it a little bit of a grip and then I will show you what I mean. Okay, so I've got the berry on this side which is just touching the edge and then the flower on that side which looks as if it's a little bit Short, not quite touching the edge there. Let's see if I can get that a little bit closer. There we go. And then I'm going to do the same for this side. Line it up exactly the same way. And then I'm going to punch out the three daisies If you have trouble lining these up and you're turning from side to side and it's still not doing it, try just lifting it up and up and down as in um, pulling it out and down that way or sides. I spent ages earlier on trying to get one of those punched out and as soon as I moved it up slightly it went into position beautifully. Right, so we've got all of these. Um, these are die cuts. And I also need to do die cuts for that. And the other stamping I need is for the bows. And my experiments have told me that the bows look best if they're on Daffodil Delight and stamped with um, Tranquil Tide. As I said, I finish up with a whole pile of stuff sitting over here that I've tried as a different colour combination um, because they didn't work and I moved over. And the um, 
bows, that's what they're like if they're stamped in Daffodil Delight. And this is what they look like if they're stamped in Tranquil Tide. Now like that, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the colour scheme at all. In fact, I should have done that sideways because it goes in the punch better. But it was once I'd got the... So I'm not going to do all of these. Um, it was once I had got the um, lighter colour laid out on my plan, on my jigsaw puzzle, that I could see that it didn't work out. Um, the stamp set the bow comes from is the Christmas set called Holly Berry Happiness, which is, I've only used that one. And then the punch is the um, Berry Builder punch. It's got the holly on there with the berries and it's got the bow. The bow is down here. So what you need to do is stamp them that way, not the way I've just done that. And then make sure that you don't have any cardstock above it. I've learnt the hard way that if you do two rows, one on top of the other, you lose them because you've got the other shapes punching out there. Now, I do struggle with this punch. In fact, I struggle with most punches that are um, builder punches. But I will see if I can do this. Oh, yeah. But I'm not going to do all of them because they're already over there ready. So you need how many? I think it's six. Yes, you need six bows. There's those three and then those three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build up what I can so far and show you what's going on here. Um, I think once you see it all coming together it makes it a lot easier to understand or at least I find it a lot easier to understand once I can see where we're going. Right now to put these together oops that was a bit messy wasn't it? Um, let's see if I can scoop that up. So I, I'm not putting this on my clothes it's uh, I have a towel sitting on my chair. So I'm always prepared for these kind of mishaps. There we go. Right, so I'm going to put the top one slightly to the left of this petal here. And then I'm going to make sure they all line up. like that. Let's give them a little bit of a push. And then this one I'm coming to the right. It just gives it a little bit better dimension rather than having one, two, three all the same. If you experiment with that you'll know what I'm talking about. Right, let's move those. Now let me just bring my plan back. I've still got to do the centre of the um, daisy, but that's all right. Okay, so what I was doing was once I'd got it this far, then I would take my flower and then I would pop it on there. I would try these two on here. And then gradually build it all up and see what I think of it. Um, all the bits I'm doing now I know work because I've already been through all this process but I just wanted to explain to you um, what the process was for me. So I'm now going to bring my Big Shot up to do the die cutting. There's not a massive amount of it but um, we still need to do some. So first of all I need these two. So let me just separate them. Uh, 
and each one is going to be layered on Daffodil Delight. So the dies that I'm using for these two, for the sentiments I'm using the largest of the stitched oval framelits. So that can go on there. And then I need a layering oval and I need the largest scallop. The cutting edge on these dies, the layering dies, is actually on the inside by the spiky bits. So as long as you can't see off the edges, you can do this, you can let the edge come over the edge of your paper. So there's one scallop and there's one stitched shape framelit. Um, I won't do the other one because as I say it's all prepared and ready. So all I need is to adhere those together and the other, what else do I need? Where's my card? I've done that and I've done that. Oh yes, I need the little scallop circle to go at the back there. Yep, I think that's all I need. If I've forgotten something then I just bring it back, bring my big shot back again. So I'm going to be using, what colour did I decide on? Right, okay, yellow, you come back again. And the die that I need for this is the layering circles framelits, and I'm using the smallest scallop die. move the big shot out of the way let's pop that die up there so with my Tombow I'm going to adhere these two pieces together and bring one of these over and adhere that onto there. Having spent most of the afternoon working on this, I'm really looking forward to seeing what uh, the card is going to look like. So I've done that, I've done that. Um, all I need to do now, I think, is the centre for my flower. Now what I decided to do on that, again, I used the yellow and the stamp is from, um, is that one there? Uh, what's that, was that one from? Oh, this one here. Oh, of course, yes, it was Daisy Delight. So it's two steps. I'm using this one here. I don't need the full one because I'm doing it onto 
coloured cardstock but I'm going to do that with Tranquil Tide and the this image is just absolute tad short of um, half an inch so this is my half inch punch and I'm just going to pop that into the middle of my daisy there we go now I think that should be everything and I think I should be able to now work on my card base and then get everything adhered together so I am going to use my uh, trimmer to do my scoring and my cutting so what you need to do is with your cardstock lined up at two inches or let me give you the uh, metric oh, I didn't transfer it over to that sheet did I okay um, we're going to do it five and ten five centimeters and then ten centimeters and for inches we're going to do two inches and I find it a lot easier to use my bone folder for scoring down with this and then at four inches and then I'm going to take this out turn it around 180 degrees put it back in and then I'm going to score again at two inches and four inches if you're using the um, a scoring board then you need to score at 2, 4, 8 and 10 nice and easy Oops. and that is 5, 10, 20 and 25 centimetres now we need to cut this so if we turn it 90 degrees like this we need to put line our edge up at one and a half inches and then we are going to cut from our 2 inch score mark down to our 10 inch score mark now I'm not going to get all of that on the screen but you, something else you may have remembered on my video last week I was really struggling to try and see what was on here plus the fact that on here the measurements are centimetres I had some great tips in from three different people who gave me advice on what to do it on what to do and I went for the one that Lily Autry um, gave me and she said it was from Gaynor Boyce and that was to cut that ruler from my grid paper under here the bottom one and adhere it on there and it is just so much easier so many thanks for that uh, Lillette and also Gainer. Right, concentrate. Um, from my two inches down to my ten inches. So I can see that so nice and easily. I know that I go off the screen here, but you know where I am. I'm starting at the one and a half inch. I'm starting at my two inches here. And no having to lean forward or tilt it up or anything just make sure that that's straight and then cut down to 10 inches or if you're metric you go from um, 5 centimeters down to 25 centimeters okay so that's all you need to do very nice and easily easy rather Right, now what you need to do is, like last week, don't fold these hard to start off with. Just do them gently. We can do the uh, real score, um, creasing in a moment. So these, fit, and also try not to bend that one. Okay, so that's the one near the top on the inside. 
and also the one at the bottom on the inside. If it does bend it's not the end of the world but because we're going to put um, something over that um, it doesn't need to be bending and I think it's probably stronger if it doesn't bend. Um, in fact it would probably have been better not to score down there anyway but that gets a bit more tricky. Right, so this one gets folded as a mountain. The next two get folded as a valley. Okay, just do it a little bit. Next two as a mountain. And then the next one as a valley. Again, just the outside bits. Don't worry about doing this one. Okay, and then this one here is a mountain. And this one here is a valley. Okay. So here we've got mountain, valley, did I do that one? Yes I did. Mountain, valley, and then mountain, valley, mountain, valley. Now, now we've done that gently, we can fold it all over. Okay. And then with your bone folder, give some really nice creases. So there's that one, that one, and that one. Turn it around and over. And you got that one, that one, and that one. And then you've got that side and that side. That's the one we didn't crease. And there should be two sideways here as well. Okay, and the one that is the front of your card is the one where you've got this shape here. Not the one where you've got that shape, but at the base, the one at the top, not that one. These are like stairs, if you like, it's the top of the stairs you want. Right. Now we're going to adhere all of our pieces. In fact, they just I don't need to be careful with those now. I know where they're going. Just have them in a pile. Right. Use my silicon mat and Tombow. I'm not sure there's a right or wrong direction with these patterns but I just recommend you look at it and you decide what looks good for you. If it looks good for you then that's right. Do two pieces at once, speed this up a little bit. Let me bring that down a little bit. For. 
I first saw this style of card years ago and it was a video by Spit, uh, Split Coast Stampers and from theirs I followed the instructions and I made a really lovely card for my mum in Australia. I spent ages fussy cutting, this is pre-stamping uh, pre up days for me, I spent ages fussy cutting loads of flowers. I was pleased with the end result, so was uh, my mum. <laughs> now this one, definitely don't think there's a right or wrong way. those, nearly done. Let's do these two. With all these pieces hanging around here, I'm bound to put the wrong piece on somewhere. And then the last one, this one does matter which way it goes. Such a beautiful summer colour this one. Right, now, all the bits that I need to go on top. I can see one sentiment, I can't see the other one. What have I done with that? Is that it? Yep. That's it, there should be two of those, one of those. And then there, there should be six bows. That's one. Two. Three, four, well I may have to go without two bows, let me see if I can see them over here somewhere, there's one, got another sentiment there, that must be the one that I've just done, um, right, okay. I'm not going to worry about that. Right, so this one is going to be going here and that's for the next card and this one's going to be going on here. Now this is what a really good way of showing you. These are what the colours that I wanted to do at first but then when I did them I just didn't think it looked very nice. I thought the green was a bit overpowering. Um, and also with the flower, I was going to have that, but I thought that, mm, I thought that looked a lot nicer. Um, but that's what I'm, I do when I'm designing my cards. These won't be wasted, I will use them for something, um, just not this card. And as this is a uh, fancy fold, I won't be using any dimensionals on it either. Okay, so that's just in the middle there. This one's going to go in the middle, the other end. And I want to point out something to you about when you decorate the top long bits. Right, now with the daisy, I don't 
put um, glue on all the petals. I just put on that circle at the back. I'm not going to curl the leaves up because it's going to get shut inside. Now with these two pieces here, um, this is another card that I made. This is my first one. I'll show you this. And this was using the Fresh Florals Designer Series paper. Now I was really quite pleased with how this turned out, except when I close it, this is halfway. I mean, it's not a major problem at all, but it's something that I now avoid. So with my new one now, what I do is I just make sure that the design is there so it all gets seen, and then I leave the rest of this blank. I could put another bow in there, but I thought that might be overkill. So let's pop these two on. Oh, that was obviously used for something else. Uh, which way? I do it with the leaf that I chopped a bit off. I do that at the top. Oops. That's it. So I've got that so it's halfway there. I should do the same with the other one. With the leaf up at the top. I did think about putting that on the opposite end so that it's not all symmetrical but once it's closed I thought it might look as if I've lost one so I decided against that. Right now with these I've lost one, haven't I? So, no, I haven't lost it, I've misplaced it. It's not that one there, is it? No. Um, right, so one goes at the top there, and I do the same on this side. One at the bottom. screen there again on aren't I? Right. So this one I tuck it by the happy birthday. This one up at the top, level with that. When I find the other one or make a new one, it will be going at the bottom. And this one, I put so that this part of the bow goes onto that dot there. And it means you have to put the tails of the bow down so it stick onto the uh, bit down there as well. I had all sorts of ideas about putting bows on these and but in the end I decided no don't do overkill um, top to tom right okay so there's my card I think that has turned out really nicely with the colour schemes but I hope you understand, um, I hope I've ex explained myself properly about um, how I do this and how I experiment with my bits and pieces. Um, obviously life would be a lot easier if I just cased somebody else's card. Um, but that's not me. Um, wouldn't be any point doing a video if I was just copying somebody else. Um, and the other thing is I noticed on the videos that I did see with the trifolders, most people do um, 12 inches by five and a half um, and I don't know why they do that because at this size they still fit into the stamping up envelope um, unless of course they are different sizes um, across the pond I don't know see that goes in beautifully so there we go that's today's project I hope you like it and I really really hope you give it a try um, 
because it is a delightful card and I think anybody who receives one of these will be absolutely thrilled. Um, many thanks for joining me today. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the box below or email me at jambi at jambicards.com. Always very happy to help you. If you'd like to purchase any of the products that I featured here, there'll be a link to my 24-7 stamping up shop in the box below. Just click on that and it will take you to my shop. If you've enjoyed my video, um, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button. And as I said earlier, I will leave all the measurements um, and the products that I've used in the box below. Um, I will also put them on my blog, um, but you don't need to go over there to find them. They will be down there. And I have just noticed while I'm sitting here talking to you is that on this one here I put some pearls on the front sentiment, which I will do to both the other two once I've finished videoing. Looks nice, doesn't it? So there we go. Many thanks for joining me today. Until next time, happy crafting. Cheerio!